My dear friends, today we celebrate the 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year A. The first reading taken from the book of Exodus continues giving more specific social and religious laws after the Ten Commandments are proclaimed. The first law refers to the offering of sacrifices to pagan gods. Whoever offered sacrifice to any gods instead of to Yahweh alone was liable to death. While this law was often broken, this penalty was rarely applied. Although we do see this happening when Elijah executed the prophets of Baal in the book of 1 Kings. The second law refers to our treatment of aliens or migrants or strangers. A good measure of our moral character is found in how we treat a stranger. People often find it easy to treat their own flesh and blood well, but God commands us to have a concern for others, including the stranger. The third law refers to the treatment of widows and orphans. The widows and orphans were the weakest and most vulnerable members of society. Because of their special vulnerability, God commanded special care and concern for them, promising to protect them. The fourth law pertains to charging interest on loans. Interest was prohibited on loans made to the poor and the taking of collateral has to be reasonable. The loan is seen as assistance to a neighbour and to make money from his need would be immoral. Retaining one's outer garment which was used as a temporary collateral overnight was strictly forbidden. A majority of these laws lay down before us how we are to treat our fellow human beings. As I record this homily, the war between Israel and Palestine continues to claim more lives. The war between Ukraine and Russia shows no signs of ending and closer home at Manipur, the violence continues unabated. The enduring hatred and strife between ethnic and national groups shows just how little humanity has progressed. As God has promised to hear the prayer of the poor man when he cries out to the Lord, we earnestly pray that we first and foremost recognize that each person is a human person made in the image and likeness of God and that peace be restored to the world. The second reading taken from St. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians continues from where we left off last week. Paul and his colleagues had preached in Thessalonica with the intention of pleasing God rather than the people. The Thessalonian Christians had experienced the integrity of Paul and his colleagues and even though they were suffering, having seen their authenticity, the new Christians in Thessalonica responded by imitating Paul and his colleagues. And as they did so, they were also imitating the Lord. As they live now, inspired by the Holy Spirit and in conviction that Christ's death and resurrection have guaranteed their own salvation, they experience joy amid all their difficulties. Paul encourages them further by saying that they have become powerful witnesses throughout Greece. Their main strength behind this witness value was that the Thessalonian Christians had turned from the worship of idols to the worship of the living God. They had moved from the worship of that which is fake to that which is real. This change brought about a difference in their lives which was noticed by all. The proclamation of the gospel was enhanced by their witness. At the end, we have the reference to the parousia or the second coming of Jesus as that was an integral part of the preaching and belief of St. Paul. The witness value of the Thessalonian Christians impacted everyone and that too in a day and age when there was no modern means of communication. Today, we do have everything we need to communicate, the internet, mobile phones, etc. What is our witness value? And the best way to evangelize is to live an authentic Christian life. Are we by our lives being true witnesses of Christ? The Gospel passages the last few Sundays have been about disputations between Jesus and the religious authorities regarding the authority of Jesus. 
And today's gospel passage is almost like a finale. The first reading gave us details of many smaller laws. And in the gospel, a legal expert from among the Pharisees asked Jesus one last question to test him. Which commandment in the law is the greatest? Jesus' reply, combining the love of God and the love of neighbor, echoes the response of the ancient rabbis. What is hateful to you, do not do to your neighbor. That is the whole law. So how does one love God with all of one's heart, soul and mind? In the spiritual exercises, St. Ignatius of Loyola presents before us a meditation on the three classes of persons, which I believe helps us to understand today's gospel better. He describes three kinds of people, the postponer, the bargainer and the free person. The postponer desires to live a life of service in imitation of Christ, but feels that there are many more important things that he has to attend to first. So every time we have put off doing God's work before we achieve something else in life, we have behaved like the postponer. The bargainer also desires to serve God, but he bargains with God. I'll follow you if these things happen in my life. Such a person does not fully trust God. The last person, the truly free person, is motivated solely by the service of God. So when this person has to make a choice, he or she chooses the option that will give greater glory to God rather than to oneself. Such a person loves God with all of one's heart, that is emotions, soul, that is passion, and mind, that is intellect. What kind of a person are you? The second part of the commandment relates to loving a neighbor. Back when I was in the seminary, at times we used to have close to a hundred brothers staying in the same house and generally meal times resembled a hundred meter sprint race. If you are late, then you would have to be satisfied with only the fragrance of the meat. Humans, as we all are, we want the best pieces for ourselves, quite ignorant of the fact that there are many others still in the queue. This was a challenge that was time and again put before us, to be sensitive to the needs of others in the community. To love the neighbor as ourselves is to make a conscious choice and act upon it. When we love God's people, we are always, and at the same time, loving God. Pope Francis, in his encyclical Lumen Fidei, highlights the importance of the Christian faith as inspiring the service of justice, rights, and peace, as well as loving relationship to God. Our faith should therefore inspire social action and work for the poor and the marginalized. Our faith has to be lived out in action. Let us make it our prayer today that we become truly free persons and practice the most important commandment that Jesus gave us, the commandment of love. May God bless us all.